I am currently at SFO and we are getting ready to take off to Paris. I'm very excited because I've never been there and I have this big list of all the things I want to do. Attention ladies and gentlemen, Flight's not too bad, it is about 11 or 12 hours. This was my first time in the City of Lights and I was very excited to play Taurus. Since the weather was still cold, I packed all my winter gear, coats, hats, and scarves to bundle up for the chilly February breeze. The flight from San Francisco to Paris wasn't excruciating, about 11 hours, which was adequate time to rest on the plane since we were arriving at 10 a.m. into Paris and had a full day ahead of us. Upon arrival, we took a taxi to our hotel, washed up, and changed to head out for lunch. My first stop was Café des Flores, which was a charming corner spot on Saint Germain, one of Paris's famed streets. I've seen this place photographed all over Instagram and quite popular amongst bloggers and the likes. The decor was really cute with a floral theme, but I think my favorite part were the table mats. It had a really unique design and provided a great backdrop for photos. We ordered our first Parisian meal complete with a fancy Parisian croissant and hot chocolate. After our bellies were satisfied, we headed over to the Eiffel Tower, which was such great timing. It was golden hour. The sun was just starting to set and right above was the beautiful cotton candy sky. The Eiffel Tower is so iconic and can be recognized worldwide. It is the symbol of Paris and will definitely make you feel some type of way once you see it in person. So I am here at the Eiffel Tower and I am going that way so that we can get a smaller view of the Eiffel Tower so we can get good pictures. We took so many photos here and made sure we got the perfect shot right in front of this famous landmark. You can't come to Paris and leave without a selfie with Mr. Eiffel himself, right? And let me tell you guys, I'm not a mushy mushy person, but being in front of the Eiffel Tower does give you that super romantic butterfly jittery feeling, even if I couldn't feel my fingers and toes. Afterwards, we headed back to the hotel, took a long, much-needed nap, and woke up for a late-night dinner. One of the places I wanted to try was a super famous steak and frites restaurant. I will spare you guys my French and not attempt to pronounce the name of the place. The restaurant is very famous and serves one dish only. When you sit down, your server will ask you most likely two questions. First, how do you like your steak? And secondly, what would you like to drink? Shortly after, a bread basket will be served along with a mini salad and your main dish of steak and frites topped with their secret sauce. Hi everyone, we're at the Louvre Museum. The Louvre. I don't know how to say it. And there's tons of people. It's about 12.30, so duh, it's very expected. Very, very chilly, but we're kind of geared up. So I think we're going to get in line and just check out the museum, walk around the palace a little bit. Okay, bye! The Louvre Museum is one of the largest in the world and is home to the ultra-famous Mona Lisa. This museum attracts tons of visitors annually and I highly suggest you purchase your entrance tickets in advance to avoid the long lines. We ended up not even going inside because we couldn't withstand the cold. Such a bummer, but I guess it's a good excuse to come back to Paris, right? <laughs> By the way, fun fact, did you guys know there will be a Louvre in Abu Dhabi? It's expected to open by the end of 2016, will be located on an island, and has the most futuristic design, exceptionally different than the Louvre in Paris. His world is suddenly filled with action. I can't feel my fingers! We decided to warm up at Angelina's, which is a famous cafe with coffees, teas, pastries, and all sorts of macaroons. 
They're known for their hot chocolate, so if you guys stop by, make sure you try it and let me know how tasty it was because we actually didn't end up eating there. I wanted something a little bit more filling. So off we went, but first, an outfit picture. I was in the mood for escargot. You definitely can't leave Paris without indulging in this delicious dish. Later that night, we headed out to Hotel Costas to try their super famous cheesecake. We were actually in our pajamas with coats thrown over and didn't realize how fancy schmancy this place was. It was funny because we were immediately offered the bar upon entering. Take note, make sure you dress your absolute best if you ever come here. <laughs> Apparently, when Kim K was pregnant, she flew all the way to Paris to eat this cheesecake and you guys, it was pure heaven. Probably one of the best, if not the best, I've ever had. Definitely a must win in Paris. Pretty well rested and going to take on the day. All right, talk to you guys later, bye. It was our last day and we still had a few points of interest that we needed to check off, starting with the Arc de Triomphe. It was really cool to see the monument in person and we didn't realize it at the time, but you could have hiked up the arch and gotten an amazing panoramic view of the city. Afterwards, we headed over to Pont Alexandre III, which is the most spectacular bridge in all of Paris. Everything about this structure is so beautiful and it's been in many films, including James Bond, photos, and music videos like Adele, Someone Like You. I imagine this place would be absolutely stunning at night and just boast of romance and young love. Next up was the Notre Dame to see the Hunchback and Esmeralda, but they were on vacation. <laughs> okay, just kidding. This historic Catholic cathedral was so grand and beautiful and at the very top housed the famous bell and gargoyles. We walked around the main area and sat down for a prayer before leaving for the day. Here at Madure, look at the window display. It is so cute, right? It was time to relax, so we headed to La Dure, the ever so famous French tea house, macaroon, and pastry shop. We indulged on some sweets and hot chocolate, recapped the day, and conversed leisurely as I saw many Parisians do. One thing I noticed about the tempo of the people here in Paris was that everyone had this cool, easygoing aura about them. There wasn't one person on their phone during meals. They didn't even have it out on the table. All that mattered was the company right in front of them, something I definitely need to take note of. We saved the absolute best for last and went to the very first Chanel boutique in the world. We were so mesmerized by everything that I didn't even remember to vlog. However, I did come home with a little souvenir from Paris. This purchase was very special because it's the only store in the world with the white packaging to represent the prestigious, iconic first Chanel boutique. As a first timer in Paris, I made sure I did all the tourist things and went to all the tourist hotspots. It was so much fun to be in this beautiful city, even though it's kind of cold. I'm definitely looking forward to another trip back when the weather warms up so I can feel Paris in the summertime. Thank you for the memories. Au revoir, Paris. Until we meet again. Je t'aime.